What's up guys, I am with my buddy Mort. Now before I go on, before you even get to introduce yourself, if you used to watch Retro Liberty back in the days, Mort was on the show. He was in a band called Devious Means. He was a big fan of the show, turned into a friend, and now a part of the show. He's been hey. on Pixel Game Squad, so hello. Hey, good to be here, thanks for having me. Where are we today? We're in my game room, which was a garage, but it has since been transformed into my palace for gaming. No, that's dumb. It's been transformed into my man cave. It's an amazing man cave. And basically I was here doing some stuff last week and Mikey posted a picture on Instagram of your game room, a little yeah. sneak peek and everyone was like, dude, you gotta show us more of the room. So today we're here to show you guys Mort's game room. Let's do it. So I like a space that's clean and organized. It feels comfortable to play in and uh, sit in and not feel like there's so much clutter. So one of the things that we did was when we moved, I got rid of all the big box special edition games that I had, the oversized stuff, except I kept a few things. This is what got left over. Um, Zelda Breath of the Wild was one of my favorite sort of sets that I have. Um, and then also this Bioshock statue that I got from, uh, an, it's a GameStop exclusive, probably one of my, the only sort of statue type thing that I own. I'm just not a toys and collectibles guy, uh, except for some Amiibos and uh, this Bioshock. So one of the things that I wanted to do is to be able to have uh, a single space where you could just put the game in and play and you didn't have to move around a bunch of wires and switchers and all kinds of stuff and create a big spaghetti mess. So uh, I went to the Goodwill, got some speakers, old receivers, old TVs from our old place, and uh, was able to put this uh, section together, which is great for playing games. It's fun when one person's playing on one screen, another person's playing on another, and some of these older flat screens are becoming really inexpensive, and they still have component inputs, and that's what was working really great for us over here. So I was never a big Amiibo guy, but I started getting into it because I found a lot uh, that had a bunch of Amiibos in it and decided to keep them. However, no matter what anyone says about Amiibos, this one is really important to me, and that's because our friend, Jer Monson, uh, for his wedding, asked me to be one of the groomsmen, and when he did so, he gave me this Luigi uh, Amiibo, and he said, every Mario needs his Luigi, which I thought was such a cool thing. Uh, so this is one of the most prized parts of my collection, as Jer is such a good friend to me, and um, really cool to have and keep on display. So on this wall, I've got most of my disc-based systems and games, and um, I've got them organized by console and in alphabetical order. Here's the GameCube collection, um, and one of the things that I did when I moved was I realized all of my doubles, meaning that if the game was multi-platform, PS2, GameCube, Xbox, I actually moved away from having multiple copies, which I know a lot of collectors do, and um, going for the best playing version of the game. And for me, that's been the original Xbox. The original Xbox is one of my favorite systems to collect for. The games often look great, and you'd be surprised at how many of them are backwards compatible on the Xbox 360, and also now on the Xbox One. Games like Crimson Skies look like brand new with how good that they look. So loving collecting for the original Xbox, and I've been selling off some of the inferior versions that end up actually just taking up more space than I'd like for the GameCube or the PS2, uh, etc. And um, I didn't grow up with the PS2, but um, I've been enjoying collecting for it and finding games on it that are fun to play. Also on here is the, is the current generation consoles and systems that we've got, uh, including a lot of Wii titles, a lot of garbage Wii titles, but also a lot of good ones too. And probably my other favorite system to collect for when I see the games uh, out in, in the wild I love to pick up is for the Dreamcast. I never see Dreamcast games anymore, but I love picking up games for the system. It's a great system to play on, really cool system to collect for, and can look really great on modern displays. So I got really into collecting for the PlayStation Vita because I had this sense that these games are so unique, the, the gameplay experiences are so different that I just thought that they would be harder to find later on and I love how they look 
on that OLED screen with the two analog sticks. There are certain games I don't collect on that system because they're frankly not appropriate, but that's just me. Um, however, some of the, the harder games to find, like this game, uh, Persona Solid Gold Edition, which is really hard to find. I got it a while ago, around the time it came out, and I definitely paid over its initial retail price. I'm glad I got it then versus what it's going for now. Another game that Vita collectors are, are looking for a lot is Arno Surge Plus, a game that's uh, just kind of another really interesting game. I think this game is more rare opened than it is sealed because so many people buy this game and uh, would just leave it sealed and then download it to play it. In addition, I love collecting the different handheld systems. One of my favorites is this Persona 4 um, the Dancing All Night uh, Vita console. Um, it's a Japanese exclusive. You can see here what it looks like, uh, which we can take out for later if you'd like. But um, love having this. And uh, yeah, a lot of the, the special editions and stuff I've gotten here, I've gotten through trades or online um, around the time that they came out. They're fun, they're fun to collect. Uh, and I couldn't collect them anymore because I can't afford them anymore. So in addition, we've got Xbox One, uh, Switch, and PS4 for the modern systems up here, or the current gen systems up here. PS3 games down here, which I've been loving collecting for PS3, but especially for Xbox 360 because these are games that are really cheap to pick up right now. Maybe one of the more unique ones, let me find it. I don't ever hear people talking about this game very much. much. This is Operation Darkness, published by Atlas on the Xbox 360. It's a game where you interact with vampires, werewolves, and uh, all in a plot to take down Adolf Hitler. That's a game. And also, let's not leave out the Wii U, which really with the Switch, a lot of my favorite games on the Wii U have been ported over to the Switch. So that's, that collection is continually dwindling down to just the essentials because so many of the great games on it are now on the Switch. So over here is all of the games that really got me into gaming. This is the generation that I grew up on. For me, my first console was the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I have a lot of the games here for it that I love to play and, um, and play with others and that sort of a thing. The games though that I would get uh, often were the big AAA releases. The new Mario game, the new Street Fighter game, etc. But then one day my mom came home with Nagano Winter Olympics and I thought, you know what, you can buy other games besides the AAA games. And that's what got me into playing a lot of video games and enjoying different kinds of video games other than just the big releases. This game isn't a very good game. Um, it's incredibly antiquated by today's standards, but it's also really important to me because this is when I started buying games and back then I kept my boxes, which is why I went for a boxed set of N64 games. I'm missing about six boxes at this point, Two of those are Rayman 2 and Yoshi's Story, which I'll probably get at some point in a trade or something like that. The other are, are Worms Armageddon, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, uh, Super Bowling, and uh, Stunt Racer 64. I don't think I'll ever own those boxes, and I'm totally fine with that. In fact, one of the best things that you could do as a collector is just learn how to be patient. And the best example of that is down here, these PS1 games, a lot of these are some of the harder to find RPGs, and I got those because there was a lot that I, I found at a garage sale. Three tubs of games, and all I could see at the top of the tub of games was Squeak It In 2. And I, he said, I said, how much do you want for your games? The guy said, I just want a hundred bucks for everything. I couldn't get the money out fast enough. I got three tubs of games, and almost every single game was an RPG. In addition, all the N64 games are out of the case because I don't want to mess up the boxes too much. And of course over here some box Super Nintendo games. For me, I grew up as a Ren and Stimpy fan and this game in particular is one of my favorite games as a kid uh, where you play as Ren and Stimpy doing all sorts of shenanigans. Really fun game. Uh, in addition, on the NES, um, ha I had to have the original Super Mario Brothers in box just because of what this game means to every gamer, uh, myself included, and uh, wanted to really kind of have this in the box and I got it in a lot from a friend. So down here, one of the things that I started doing was collecting the Vita console boxes. So these don't all have consoles in them. 
but I loved the different box variants just because it was really cool. So I would pick up these uh, and get all the different variants. I'm missing, I think, one of the variants, but it's all right, I'm probably not gonna get it. But nonetheless, all of these are different 3DS and 2DS XL consoles that I've picked up through those GameStop trades or just have gotten the boxes for them because again, I love, you know, like the artwork on this guy uh, and some of the other ones as well. Going up here to my PSP collection, I don't really play the PSP that much. Um, and in fact, with handhelds, I really play the 3DS mostly these days, I'm playing Sh uh, Sushi Striker a lot right now. Up here is the DS and the 3DS stuff. Um, really great uh, console. Probably My 3DS is probably my favorite uh, Nintendo games to play up until they released the Switch, just because it felt like Nintendo's heart and soul was in this console in a way that it wasn't in their other consoles. So games like Luigi's Mansion, um, you know, it really kind of feel like the spirit of that playful, creative Nintendo. Uh, and over here I've got uh, the limited run games collection. Um, I, I've been picking up all the Vita games except for a couple I've, I've passed on. And uh, over here is just the regular Vita games. Uh, as well. Uh, and so some of these are imports. The Vita is region free. Um, and most of these though are uh, American release games. So over in this corner of the garage is the Rift area. This is the old school CRT with the original old school consoles that I played as a kid growing up. So starting with the NES, the Super Nintendo, the N64, an original PlayStation, a Dreamcast, and a GameCube. Now the reason I've got these, t these consoles hooked up to this TV is because I really enjoyed playing those games on this kind of TV back in the day. And for me, this is how they still play the best. I know that my life in gaming and a lot of people have looked at really creative ways to make these games playable on a flat screen, but I wanted to avoid that if I could just because this was the way that they were originally made to be played and optimized at, and that for me worked the best. So right here I've got it connected up to uh, the TV. Uh, loved p being able to sit down on this side of the room playing four player uh, multiplayer uh, games. And then in addition up here we've got all of these uh, steering wheels, fight sticks, all this kind of stuff stored out of the way, looking good and uh, ready to play. Mort, I'm officially more than jealous. I remember when I had a cooler <laughs> game room than yours and now it's like my game room's like this compared to your room like this. So <laughs> thank you for showing us. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad that we could uh, look at the games and talk about them and you guys could get a a look at the fun that we can have in this room. Yeah, we do have a lot of fun. We're doing a game night on Friday, so. Game night on Friday. It's be part time. All right, guys, let us know. Do you have a game room? Do you want a game room? Or has this, seeing this diminished your happiness and diminished any chance of you ever having a game room? That's what it did for me. No. I'm selling all my stuff after this video. <laughs> so am I. Okay, not, all right, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. See you guys. Thanks for watching.